Hi everybody, welcome to this Timeline documentary. My name is Dan Snow and here I am in a Lancaster bomber cockpit, one of the few remaining Lancasters from the Second World War, to tell you about my new history channel. It's called History Hit, it's like Netflix for history. Hundreds of history documentaries on there and interviews with many of the world's best historians. Follow the information below this film or just search online for History Hit and make sure you use the code TIMELINE to get a special introductory offer. Now enjoy this show. It's not something that everyone would do in their lifetimes. It's not easy. It is very hostile. C'est vraiment pas les endroits où il faut se blesser. This is a very dangerous part of the world. In the heart of the Antarctic, night adventurers are about to live an extraordinary story. They come from very different backgrounds, but one thing brings them together, a passion for adventure and testing the limits. Their goal, to follow in the footsteps of one of the greatest legends of the golden age of polar exploration, Ernest Shackleton. In 1914, after the sinking of his ship, the Endurance, this hero saved his entire crew from a certain death. 100 years later, our expedition sets out to explore the sub-Antarctic islands of Elephant, South Georgia, and the South Sandwich by boat, ski, and polka. On board the Astralis, an expedition leader, a veteran explorer, a former officer, a skipper, a polar guide, a scientist, two young soldiers, and an athlete snowboarder. An expedition to remind us of the fragility of this highly endangered ecosystem and to improve our understanding of these remote expanses. With them, you will relive the best, but also the most challenging moments of this great adventure. Their adventure starts at the southern tip of Chile, but a gigantic weather storm forces them to wait for the right time slot to pass Cape Horn. Throughout the journey, patience will be the finest ally. The Drake Passage is, is what's our problem at the moment. This gap here is about 500 miles. So this, the front leading edge of this must be at least a thousand miles long. It's a big, big system. It's, and to me, it's, it's really beautiful. It's one of the most beautiful and uh, outstanding lows I've seen, I can remember seeing in a long time. I mean, the power of this thing and what it will create is, will be impressive to see. I don't want to see it though. Well, if we, it's a pass, but if we had left this morning, we would be at Cape Horn tonight. Would we be in trouble at Cape Horn? The question is, do we gain a few hours and do fuck all? Yeah. Or do we stay here and have a bit of freedom? And exactly. Exactly. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious what we should do. Yeah. Maybe it will be only on Tuesday. Yeah. Maybe. No, that's a... Uh, we don't know yet. Yeah. The Drake Passage, the body of water between Antarctica and the southern tip of South America, is well known for the extreme difficulty of its crossing. Seas are often turbulent and have for a long time been a graveyard for sailors. As soon as the weather will allow, Australis will attempt to make its way to Elephant Island, a mountainous island continually beaten by the winds, located at the north of the Antarctic Peninsula. Shackleton's men took refuge here after the endurance was caught in the ice. At last, the anchor is raised. The sailboat uses a very unusual engine salvaged from an old locomotive. Beyond the roaring 40s and the furious 50s, its dependability will be crucial. This squad is composed of four Brits, two French, one Australian, one American, and one Swiss, united around a common objective, to live an exceptional experience. Solidarity among them will be key to confronting unchained elements. Tribune, Tribune. My French is getting worse. 
My name is David Hempelman Adams. I run a chemical company. The Englishman, David Hempelman Adams, is the first to have reached the highest summits on the seven continents, as well as the North and South Poles. Despite his numerous achievements, this businessman is always looking for new challenges. This is the only room I'm allowed to have uh, any, any souvenirs of expeditions. This is the oxygen cylinder from the summit I used in 1993. And this is my boss, he's the Duke of Edinburgh. And um, this is how I started off in adventure. He has a, an award scheme called the Duke of Edinburgh's Award. And I would started that when I was 13 years old. The map of the world, which is always important. So on these two pages, I live a lot of my life. Just on the Arctic Ocean, I spent uh, over two years of my life in a tent, freezing, eating terrible food. It's horrible, very, very brutal, very brutal, very cold temperatures. But I miss it. When I'm there, I hate it. And when I'm here, I miss it. It's uh, a paradox. To the contrary, no paradox for Ben, the skipper of the Australis. Like his father before him, he has spent the last 20 years navigating the polar regions. It's the right boat. It's what we call the right tool for the job. We carry a lot of fuel, a lot of people, a lot of equipment. Uh, the boat's heavy, reliable engine. We can push around in, and work in situations where not many other small boats or yachts can. Uh, so it's, yeah, we, as we say, it's the right tool for the job. For some, the crossing is not fun. Not everybody's lucky enough to have sea legs. Les deux premiers jours, j'étais vraiment pas bien. Et puis, euh, heureusement que, que toute l'équipe a été vraiment, vraiment euh, cool. Parce que, en fait, euh, le seul endroit où je me trouvais bien sur le bateau, <laughs> c'était la banquette arrière où tout le monde se retrouve dans le bateau. J'avais un côté particulier où je me posais tout le temps et où je dormais les 24 premières heures non-stop. This first polar experience will also likely be difficult for Ollie and Keith, two expedition novices. These young soldiers invited by David and Justin both fought and were wounded in Afghanistan. The idea is to give them the opportunity to learn a bit more about an adventure rather than just soldiering. It's the responsibility is we have to get them back safely, so we won't let them do anything stupid. What? Don't get scared, you fellas! What is it? Fellas! I was wounded in, on Havoc 12 in Afghanistan. My eardrum was damaged, and it left me with balance problems. If I go too fast, the balance goes, and I have to slow down. commander of an armoured vehicle or a dismounted section of men, depending on the role and the job we're doing. I thought of joining the army, I've never really thought of doing anything else. So as I was growing up, I was always interested in the army and in the military. UGL, so a grenade, fired from a launcher, um, landed next to me, went off, um, shattered my elbow, um, breaking two bones in my arm and also sending shrapnel into my left leg, which bounced around and caused a bit of damage. It took me about a year to get back to um, a decent state of fitness. Um, now it still causes a few problems with strength and nerves, but um, yeah, it's, it's all right now. It's getting there. This is a first civil adventure for our two young soldiers. For Zoe, the scientist, it is also the first field mission. A young doctoral student from the CNRS, she will have the opportunity to apply her knowledge in these rarely traveled seas and to conduct a genuine oceanographic campaign. J'ai toujours été euh, élevé au, au bord de la mer, j'ai fait du bateau étant plus jeune. C'est une idée je pense qui qui vient de, de longtemps et c'est une passion. Ici, je viens déployer donc des bouées dans le entre Elephant Island et la Géorgie du Sud principalement pour étudier cette région de l'océan, du courant circumpolaire antarctique qui est assez peu connu 
du fait de peu de données in situ, vu que peu de bateaux passent dans le coin. Il se trouve que le courant circumpolaire antarctique est le courant le plus puissant sur Terre. Et c'est un courant qui régit en particulier la enfin, plein de choses, les échanges entre les bassins, entre les trois grands bassins, et aussi la circulation thermoéline, c'est-à-dire la circulation dans le plan vertical de l'océan. Il a un rôle très important dans la circulation océanique. This current flows around Antarctica and is critical to the future of global ocean circulation. Among others, it influences the Gulf Stream and plays an essential role in climate fluctuations. Pour être équipé, il faut y aller avec une logistique lourde, bien souvent assez lourde, ou bien des technologies qui soient très adaptées pour fonctionner dans cet environnement-là. These technologies were non-existent in the early 20th century when Shackleton set out to discover this terra incognita. However, there were four scientists working on the endurance, a geologist, a meteorologist, a physicist, and a biologist, conducted innovative experiments. Ils ont fait un travail de, de, de pionnier absolument fantastique, avec évidemment beaucoup moins de, 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 de technologie, il n'y avait pas de satellite, il n'y avait pas de calculateur, la microélectronique n'existait pas, donc ce qu'ils ont fait, c'est fabuleux. When they went to the South Pole, the map was empty. And um, he wanted to try and cross Antarctica. He went down from South Georgia in a, a, a boat called the Endurance. The, the Endurance story is, is remarkable. Having been to the Southern Ocean and sailed there, I really understand how extraordinary it is. I mean, really, you know, it defies all aspects of logic. It's amazing. The whole story is amazing. And for us to emanate any of it is an honor. It's a complete privilege. The entire Australis team owes to Luke Hardy the privilege of reliving Shackleton's Odyssey. The leader of this fabulous expedition is a Franco-American entrepreneur, adventurer, and environmental advocate. He has to his credit several scientific expeditions to the polar regions. Manhattan is definitely my uh, environment, my city. Uh, it's been for 30 years now. That is where I spend most of my working time. I help uh, technology entrepreneurs uh, to uh, create, uh, develop their uh, company, their startups, their projects, and I help them uh, raise money to finance their ideas, that's what I do, uh, about uh, half my time uh, and the other half I spend in the world of uh, adventure, expedition and uh, uh, environmental uh, advocacy. In uh, both cases it's about uh, to finance a project or, or the expedition, the adventure, assembling a great team of uh, people with uh, different uh, knowledge, talents, different nationalities often. So yes, uh, I see a lot of uh, similarities. After four days of crossing, the GPS shows that Elephant Island is near. Suddenly, a mountain rises from the ocean. Despite the emotion, Magnus, the first mate, remains vigilant. On this inhospitable coast, battered by ferocious winds, anchorages are complex and repel the few who would dare to attempt landing. With all this snow and the visibility like it is, we can't see what's you know, 50 meters, 100 meters away from us. Um, if we go along the coast, are these like beaches? I mean, where you can it's go? Much, with... It's much like this. You know, you'll have a, a bit of a landing somewhere and then rock face and then glacier and then landing rock face and glacier. Destroyed by ice, Endurance, Shackleton's three-masted ship, had sunk the previous winter. Using only three lifeboats, the survivors reached Elephant Island and remained there for five months, courageous and persevering. I think that the Shackleton story is a good story that everyone should know. There were 27 people. When the Endurance was sunk, they all knew that they should die. But they had such a belief, their leader, Shackleton. He had to rescue his men, so he put them in the life rafts and he managed to get to Elephant Island. So the only help was the help he could get. So he had to make his own rescue. So 
He then went from Elephant Island to uh, South Georgia in a very small little boat called the James Caird. Leaving his exhausted crew here, Shackleton and five other sailors will brave a furious ocean on a seven meter long wooden boat in the hope of reaching South Georgia to find help. If today staying on these grounds is difficult and dangerous, imagine that 100 years ago, the survivors of the Endurance had to survive four months on this inhospitable and barren island made up of rocks, snow, and ice. Far from the sea routes of the time, ill-equipped against the wind and cold, they subsisted almost exclusively by eating penguins and seals. Their survival depended on their companions gone to seek help over 800 miles away. You want to stay four months here? No, thank you. Following the protocol of her mission, Zoe will collect her first snow samples. They contain atmospheric dust and will be analyzed when she returns to Europe. Je récupère des échantillons de neige pour étudier les poussières atmosphériques principalement et euh, du coup, il faut des échantillons de neige d'Elephant Island, Georgie du Sud, des sandwichs. While landing the original survivors lost three important crates never found. Justin gets ready to dive at this location. I've dived all my life, and I'm fascinated by what's under the water. I was a soldier for a long time, and I sailed for Britain. Since I left the army, I've been very lucky to carry on adventuring. Really. Here we are at the Royal Geographic Society in London. This is where my real love of adventure started. Um, I was about 12 years old and my parents brought me here. This incredible guy here, Sir Ernest Shackleton, very major player in the discovery of getting to the South Pole and understanding Antarctica. And it's amazing, you know, having just got back, standing under this iconic statue, which I've seen all my life, that we've gone and done what he just did. And it was astounding. It was properly astounding. Although accustomed to diving at diverse locations around the globe, Justin takes this cold immersion very seriously. I had a sort of aim of maybe trying to find something on the floor. You know, you have that kind of silly dream that you might come up with a box that they might have lost or something. Diving in uh, Shackleton's place of rescue must be pretty extraordinary. Lovely dive, clear water, a bit chilly on the hands, but otherwise no drama. Amazing. Australis sets sail for South Georgia. If today four days are enough time to reach the island, a century earlier, the 700 miles required 15 days of self-sacrifice and effort. Today, Shackleton's crossing in a lifeboat remains one of the most extraordinary maritime stories of all time. Each team member takes advantage of this leg to do a variety of tasks.
On this new leg of the journey, the boat crosses path with a giant tabular iceberg along which they run for 30 minutes. The ice monster named B-17A by scientists broke away from Antarctica in year 2000. To date, it has already traveled nearly 15,000 miles along the Antarctic coast before turning into the Weddell Sea. Its measurements are huge, 32 kilometers long, 11 kilometers wide, and 25 meter high. This iceberg is twice the size of Manhattan. It weighs a whooping 100 billion tons. Each year, several scientific expeditions explore the polar regions. The data collected by Zoe's instruments will contribute to the study of this fragile ecosystem endangered by the disturbances of our planet. En fait, on a mis à l'eau deux grands types de bouées. On a mis des des bouées de surface. Donc elle l'idée c'est qu'elles flottent et elles vont bouger avec le courant. Et donc elles, elles ont une petite antenne satellite qui leur permet de transmettre leurs données plusieurs fois par jour. Et elles font des données de pression, salinité, température à la surface de l'océan. Et après, on a les flotteurs plus gros qu'on a mis à l'eau, donc qui euh, permettent de descendre à 1000 mètres de profondeur, qui restent à leur profondeur de parking à 1000 mètres, et qui, en remontant, font des mesures de température et de salinité. Elles arrivent à la surface, elles émettent leurs données, elles restent le temps qu'il faut, donc c'est environ une dizaine d'heures, et après, ils replongent, ils attendent de nouveau 5 jours en profondeur, ils remontent, on va pouvoir voir si on, a des, on est dans un contexte normal ou anormal, ou aussi si euh, on est dans la moyenne, si on a des évolutions sur le long terme de la température, de la salinité. La température, par exemple, on sait que la température de l'océan, globalement, va augmenter, mais on va pouvoir quantifier de combien. Antarctica's history is closely linked to whaling. For nearly a century, many whaling stations exploited decimated whale's fat that was used to light the world capitals, among other things. Gridviken, which was the most important of these ports, stopped the massacre in 1966. Today, on this same island, scientists have replaced whalers. A dozen of them live in total isolation at King Edward Point Research Station. They conduct various studies, including one on krill. This small crustacean is the keystone of the Southern Ocean ecosystem. It feeds on phytoplankton and is the main source of food for fish, whales, seals, and penguins. Global warming is already destabilizing this natural system, and scientists are trying to curb the enthusiasm of industrial fishing for this little shrimp. A mission, among others, for which they work on site for months. Meanwhile, Géraldine gets ready to do her first ride of the expedition. La Géorgie, c'est une vieille histoire pour moi. Quand j'étais petite, euh, ma maman m'avait abonné au magazine Géo. C'est un super magazine où il y a plein de photos d'endroits magiques sur Terre. Et euh, j'étais tombée sur des photos de la Géorgie. Je, je rêvais bien sûr d'aller découvrir cette île et d'arriver après autant de temps sur l'eau. C'était Alice au pays des merveilles, quoi. Il y a 100 ans, quand euh, toute l'équipe de Shackleton partait pour l'Antarctique, ils ont fait un arrêt à Gridwicken et ils ont fait ce sommet. Et euh, il y a une photo euh, assez mythique euh, au sommet. Euh, du Dieu Speak, c'était assez classe d'être là-haut et puis de, de repenser à cette photo. Bon, 
pensais pas à faire de la compétition de, de snowboard. Je voulais juste participer une fois. Après huit ans sur le circuit international de freeride, quelque part euh, le schéma se répète. Je me suis dit maintenant, euh, voilà, il faut que je passe à autre chose. The winner of several snowboarding extreme events, the Swiss lady has gradually moved away from the podiums. Her goal now, to discover the most beautiful landscapes in the world, both while snowboarding and base jumping. After four days at sea, Australis approaches King Hacken Bay on the west coast of South Georgia. This is where Shackleton and the crew on James Caird's lifeboat landed to seek help. However, the nearest whaling station was unfortunately on the opposite coast. With Worsley and Crean, the only two sailors still able to walk, Shackleton crossed the island from one side to the other, hoping to find a human presence. Inspired by this odyssey, the crew of the Australis follows in their footsteps. Stromness is the destination almost 40 miles away. Il faut vraiment faire attention, c'est qu'on est vraiment isolé de tout. Donc euh, il faut pas faut pas se faire mal quoi. Voilà, pour moi c'est c'est surtout ça. It is a long journey through rugged mountains and treacherous glaciers. It would be too dangerous to attempt the crossing in bad weather. And unfortunately, this is precisely what is announced. Should we rush or adjourn? And uh, the wind is uh, also very strong after on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, next. And, uh, I mean, th th this window is the best of, of the windows we're going to have over the next yeah. eight days. Despite the unfavorable conditions, the captain drops anchor in the bay and everyone prepares for the crossing. On est la première fournée, on a débarqué les premiers bagages. C'est mouvant, hein. Se dire que l'ancêtre de nos amis anglais, Ernest Shackleton, était là il y a presque, presque 100 ans. Several members of this group are definitely not used to advancing in the mountains and even less in extreme conditions. This is the case of Zoe, for whom this is a first. <laughs> Ali and Keith, despite their military exploits, are also completely inexperienced in this field. I've done a bit of climbing. I've never skied, no. So, literally, when we land on South Georgia, that will be the first time I have ever strapped on a pair of skis. I'm used to walking a lot, obviously, in the army, but Nothing like this with skis on, sledges, crevasses, the temperatures, the wind. No, I've never done anything this extreme before. No. Still, despite their lack of experience, the soldiers and the young scientists also leave in the footsteps of Shackleton's for this 50-kilometer trek they are far from seeing the end of. South Georgia does not offer itself easily to newcomers. weather changes incredibly fast. You have these lows pummeling through, and you can have four seasons in two hours. Everything you do in the cold and the wind takes longer. Um, if you have your fingers out in the cold for too long, you lose, um, you lose the feeling to your fingers, and it's all, everything is a lot harder and a lot slower, um, so that's getting, taking a bit of getting used to. The conditions become too hellish to proceed. We'll have to stop and install a makeshift camp in the middle of nowhere for the night. Fortunately, the senior members of the team have experienced this situation before, and their skills allow for the building of a shelter. The wind blows incessantly. The tent may rip and fly at any time. 
I thought it was uh, a good experience to stay in the tent and it was very safe but when the, the wind started to go uh, very strong I realized the younger people were looking to see if I was worried. The night we spent up on the mountain, um, that'll stay with me for a long time. That kind of weather was different for me. I mean, I've, I've done lots of, of sleeping outside in rough weather, but that was, that was the, next, the next level for me, really. What if uh, we end up with uh, uh, accidents or major problems, uh, not even speaking about, you know, potential deaths or whatever. It didn't feel good for, for a couple of hours, I must say. In the morning, after a few hours of difficult sleep, the situation has hardly evolved. The decision is made to leave the camp and try to reach the coast where Australis should be able to assist them. On this inhospitable terrain, the weather is difficult to forecast and they need to postpone continuing. Yet, in 1916, after almost two years of wandering, Shackleton and his men had only one choice, to reach the East Coast, because the survival of the 22 men left on Elephant Island depended on it. This morning, at about midday, we decided we needed to bug out. So we've come back down into, into um, Gresham Bay. It makes us realize what a, uh, an incredible feat uh, what Shackleton did. Uh, in crossing, in doing his traverse across South, South Georgia. I mean, incredible, 100 years ago, uh, dog tired already, wrong kit, or not the right climbing kit, and he did in 36 hours. I mean, pretty miraculous, really. Oats, fruit duck, a bit of Bertrand time, and you're ready for anything. The next day, everyone is active. A short weather window seems to open, which would give them just enough time to find the equipment left on the ice cap and allow for resuming the legendary crossing. But once more, even before they can reach shore, the wind god rages. Il y a beaucoup, beaucoup de vent. Rien que dans la baie, il y a 30, 30 nœuds. Puis quand on regarde là-haut, on voit qu'il y a entre 50, 80 km heure de vent. On va attendre un petit peu, on attend une heure. On voit comment ça se passe. Tunes and a rose and soft stuff. Come and a rose too. The tones and the wound subside. Hope was short-lived, impossible to continue the crossing today. However, the forced wait gives them time to discover another gem of the island, the Bay of St. Andrews within a half-day sail. When the silence hits the South Georgia is one of the most spectacular wildlife sanctuaries in the world. An exceptional wildlife which few visitors have a chance to marvel at. The wildlife made this trip for me. And if I'd done nothing else but come here and photograph wildlife, I, that, that would have been the trip. Still, you know, the best trip ever for me. of the same species, in that case, the king penguins. Weather conditions do not improve. 
Magnus and the skipper take advantage of this lull to continue their work mapping the depths. Most of the maps of this region are inaccurate, so they want to create their own. Greater accuracy will ensure safer anchorages for their boat. Now, charting has become a business, an industry, so there's more charting being done, but we don't get to see the, the data as the end users. So what we're doing is creating our own. And that's, again, that's part of the safety of, of working in an area like Antarctica or South Georgia. Magnus charts the study area with sonar and reports the data collected on a new map. This very pragmatic science allows for less random navigation. As for Zoe, she continues to collect snow samples. Très très peu d'études sont menées. À ma connaissance, nous fournirons vraisemblablement une des premières mesures d'analyse chimique de de ce type dans cette vaste zone qui est l'Atlantique Sud. Le but de cette étude concerne l'effet du transport des poussières atmosphériques sur le climat global de la Terre. En retombant dans l'océan, elles vont alimenter en micronutriments, en oligoéléments, comme on peut appeler ça, de la même façon que les agriculteurs mettent de l'engrais sur leur terre pour que ça pousse mieux, et bien les poussières atmosphériques jouent ce rôle sur le plancton, qui sont des algues qui font de la photosynthèse et qui transforment le dioxyde de carbone atmosphérique en matière organique et donc le retirent de l'atmosphère et comme ça participe à abaisser l'intensité de l'effet de serre. Les échantillons doivent être traités, ça prend beaucoup de temps. Nous avons fait des pré-analyses qui sont encourageantes. Ça va prendre plusieurs mois pour que nous soyons sûrs des données que nous avons mesurées et pour pouvoir les porter à la connaissance de nos collègues et de la communauté scientifique pour que nous puissions tous collectivement travailler sur un jeu de données qui soit fiable et pérenne. Là, on est à nouveau à Possession B. Donc là, il faut qu'on monte aujourd'hui. Le but, c'est de déblayer tout le camp. J'espère qu'il y a un ski qui va sortir encore. Sinon, ben, au GPS, chez les points GPS. <rire> la, première, la première mission avant de déblayer le camp, c'est de le retrouver. Tiens. Non, puis on, a beaucoup, on a beaucoup de matériel. Là, quoi. The wait finally ends. Everyone prepares in their own way for this new attempt at crossing the island. Making a different kind of movie now. Huh? <laughs> Our adventure in Antarctica. In the fridge. In the fridge. <laughs> Before continuing the crossing, the equipment left in the storm must be found. But the task may be daunting. sauvetage s'est bien passé. Voilà, ça a été. On a tout retrouvé, mais il nous manque un ski quand même. Luc a perdu un ski. Donc pour moi, ça va être à pied. Voilà, je vais donner mes skis à Luc et moi, ça sera la Chacolton Crossing à pied, comme Chacolton. When Shackleton landed on the west coast, no man had yet ventured to the interior of the mountainous island. South Georgia is a chain of high mountains rising from the ocean. Survival depended on their ability to avoid many pitfalls without maps or mountaineering equipment. Today, Keith barely keeps up with his teammates, even though he is properly equipped. Everyone had been on skis and I hadn't. People were moving a lot faster, uh, a lot more faster than me. And what happened is I kind of burnt my legs out. Um, I just waste, wasted all my energy. The elements are raging again. Visibility is almost zero. Progress is really complicated. Sans ces points GPS, sans le parcours GPS, c'est 
quand même, euh, c'est pas facile, je pense. The night will soon fall on a tired team. They must stop and set up shelter at all costs. We camp down here, and by chance, there's a really nice scooped out little gully. So we'll camp, and then we'll get to the uh, Fortuna Bay tomorrow. Since the beginning of the expedition, Geraldine has been waiting to surf down the mountains that Shackleton passed by during his crossing. At dawn, she left camp to experience several never-done-before runs, a first for which, for once, the sun is part of the game. parce que la pente en fait était parfaite, les conditions de neige étaient super belles, la neige avait bien collé sur la glace et c'était une belle pente raide qui faisait bien 50 degrés. Donc là on était euh, wow, satisfait quoi. Her descent finished, she joins the rest of the team. Camp has been dismantled, everyone is ready to continue. A night of rest has been beneficial for Keith, more confident than ever. He even provides support for others in difficult times. After the camp that night, a bit of rest, as you wonders, and I was back to my normal self, Burnley, and just able to carry on. Because at that point, people weren't skiing anyway, so there was no, you know, I wasn't trying to keep up with anyone. I wasn't uh, racing along trying to keep up. Pulkas carry all the equipment needed for these hiking expeditions. If the climb uphill can be difficult, downhill runs prove acrobatic. Fortunately, good temper and teamwork are among the strength of our adventurers. A few slopes allow for a faster crossing. Just as it did for the great explorer of the last century, the arrival in Fortuna Bay announces the end of hardship. Having lost their usefulness, the sleds are recovered by Australis. Only a few miles remain to reach the ultimate goal, Stromness. Just like Shackleton, Worsley, and Crean, who screamed with joy when using their ropes as a luge, our explorers make no effort to hide their pleasure. Shackleton gave himself no respite after his arrival at the whaling station. He left the very next day to rescue his companions. On board a Chilean ship, he needed four attempts before he was finally able to land on Elephant Island and rescue the rest of the crew thus ending 22 months of southern survival. The manager of the station didn't recognize him. And he had to say, I'm Shackleton. Can you rescue my men? That was an amazing thing. He got all the way with endurance to Elephant Island, Elephant Island to South Georgia, 
across South Georgia to get to here and then the rescue was just about to begin. They, they tried four times to get to Elephant Island and finally the uh, Yelko from Chile got there and saved all the men. But the story for Luke Audi's team does not end here. Australis is once again back at sea to extend the adventure. Cape to the South Sandwich Islands, 415 nautical miles to the southeast. These very rarely visited islands correspond to the common desire of our adventurers to go beyond the edge. The famous explorer Cook even wrote about them in his journals. These are the most hostile shores I know. It's first time, very excited, a little bit nervous. It's a long way away from everywhere and everything. Not many people go here, it's not very well charted. I've never been here before, yeah. It's new for me, weather is bad, there's ice in the water. We're very early in the season. It is time for Zoe to fulfill her last scientific mission, the launch of a new buoy in these rarely surveyed seas. L'idée là c'était en mettant ces flotteurs, c'était déjà d'aller échantillonner cette région qui est peu connue d'avoir un peu une idée de la dynamique de l'océan, donc les tourbillons, comment ça se passe dedans. C'est un programme international, donc euh, les données sont disponibles en ligne. Traiter les données, c'est un peu compliqué, mais au moins juste avoir une visualisation de où sont les bouées, ou dire là, tout le monde peut avoir accès à ça. The objective is within the Zodiac's reach. At dusk, the ship drops anchor and is about to face a new gale. Gusts of almost 100 knots break the mooring, and the crew work through the night to stabilize the boat. The problem is it's pretty windy already. It's been forecast for 25 knots, and already on our wind gauge here, we've had a maximum wind speed of 90 knots and driving around in the dark is not so much fun when it's very windy. <laughs> and there's ice in the water and rocks and, yeah. With dawn comes a break. All of Magnus's dexterity is needed to land the explorers who will attempt the ascent of Zavadovsky volcano, the slopes of which have almost never been climbed. In an end-of-the-world atmosphere, Geraldine, together with Justin and Ollie, enjoy the privilege of performing the first snowboard run down the volcano slopes. In spite of snow that feels like corrugated iron, nice and nice, nice. very nice, steady, nice steady. The snow is uh, very salty, isn't it? Very salty very snow salty. and windy. Crumbly, very crumbly. Yeah. The smell. <laughs> yeah, it smells. smells like rotting eggs. It's really the volcano that you draw when you're a child. Boom, boom, that falls in the water with the film roll on top, like that. Ouais, même si ce n'était pas les conditions les plus parfaites au monde pour pouvoir rider, c'était vibrant de, de se retrouver là-haut et de, de pouvoir rider. It's hard to curb the ambient excitement. Australis now sails south towards another of the Sandwich Islands, Vizokoi. But the inhospitable reputation of the place is well deserved. Ice blocks the boat's progress, and none of the crew wish to suffer the same fate as endurance. The expedition ends, almost. It will take nearly a week of sailing against the wind and current for Astralis to get back to square one. One main goal is always, uh, you know, let's all stay in good health and come back in one piece. And, uh, Certainly that goal has been uh, achieved. This is a very dangerous part of the world and we've done 
over 3,000 miles in this boat. This was on the edge of the earth. Any further and you're going to fall off the edge. I'm definitely proud of what I've done. If, you know, eight or nine weeks ago you'd said to me, do you think you could go on a ship, cross 3,000 miles of ocean, and then cross some of the most inhospitable terrain, following the guy, you know, Shackleton, who did it in 36 hours, I would have gone, are you crazy? <laughs> Each lived through a unique experience and, inspired by the spirit of Shackleton, tested their endurance. And while climate issues are more relevant than ever, this expedition will perhaps contribute to preserving the balance of these polar areas, essential for the future of our planet. When the